Welcome and thank you for participating in Medicaid Chat. This presentation will explore what Medicaid is, how it is funded and administered, who is eligible for Medicaid, and what services this program covers. This presentation will help explain important changes to the Medicaid program with the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. If you have any questions at the end of this video, please ask your facilitators. In 2009, a Michigan family was in serious need of health care. John and Jill were working parents who did not receive benefits through their work and could not afford to purchase coverage on their own. Jill was worried about her parents who were on Medicaid but could not afford to receive the long-term care they needed. John was suffering from depression and felt like it was affecting him at work. Their son, Tony, had been complaining about a toothache for several weeks. John and Jill also had to worry about the cost of inhalers for their daughter, Melissa, who has asthma. John and Jill began looking for assistance. They asked, what is Medicaid? Can it help us? Medicaid is a federal health insurance program that was enacted in 1965 along with Medicare under the Social Security Act. Medicaid is a publicly funded program designed to provide medical assistance to individuals and family with low incomes or limited resources. Today, Medicaid provides health insurance to approximately 69 million Americans. A large part of Medicaid is paid for by American tax dollars. Currently, all states are guaranteed at least 50% of Medicaid funding from the federal government. Some low-income states receive even more federal assistance. Even with this help, Medicaid is a very expensive program. Michigan spends a large part of its annual budget on Medicaid programs. The federal government works in partnership with the state governments to administer Medicaid programs. The federal government primarily sets minimum guidelines for what services and population Medicaid must cover. States may choose not to participate in Medicaid programs. They may also administer their own Medicaid programs. However, state programs have to adhere to federal guidelines and require oversight from the Center of Medicaid and Medicare Services, CMS, and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. States may vary in how they fund Medicaid programs as well as in terms of what services and groups of people these programs cover. For example, states may seek waivers to expand coverage to more adults or cover additional services. This flexibility ensures that Medicaid is an innovative program. Medicaid programs cover several health care services. State Medicaid programs must cover some mandatory services required by the federal government, and they can also cover additional services. Medicaid participants are eligible to receive the following mandatory services, physician services, hospital services, inpatient and outpatient, lab and x-ray services, early and periodic screening, diagnosis and treatment services for individuals under 21, medical and surgical dental services, family planning, pediatric and family nurse practitioner services, nurse midwife services, nursing facility services for individuals 21 and older, and home health care for persons eligible for nursing services, nursing facility services. In some states, Medicaid covers optional services such as prescription drugs, clinical services, dental services and dentures, physical therapy and rehab, prosthetic devices and eyeglasses, primary care case management, intermediate care facilities, inpatient care for individuals under the age of 21, home health care, hospice services, health home services for individuals with chronic conditions, and home and community-based attendant supports and services. The federal government has established some general qualifications that individuals and families must meet to enroll in Medicaid programs. These programs cover a broad population with limited incomes, including pregnant women, children and some parents in both working and jobless families, children and adults with diverse physical and mental health conditions and disabilities, 
poor, elderly, and disabled Medicare beneficiaries older than 65. It is important to remember that not everyone who is poor or medically needy is eligible for Medicaid assistance because eligibility is based on income. People making an income above the Medicaid cutoff level will not be able to enroll in these programs. Overall, Medicaid beneficiaries have traditionally been much poorer and in significantly worse health than low-income people with private insurance. After searching for information online, John and Jill found that some of their family members were eligible for Medicaid. Children are currently the largest benefactors from Medicaid coverage. Approximately one in three children receive coverage through Medicaid's Children's Health Insurance Plan, often called CHIP. John and Jill's children were eligible for Medicaid in 2009. Melissa feels much better because her parents do not have to worry about the cost of her inhalers. After going to the dentist, Tony's tooth no longer is bothering him. Medicaid also acts as a major supplement to Medicare, providing benefits to many millions of low-income elderly people. Individuals covered by both Medicaid and Medicare are often referred to as dual eligible beneficiaries. Dual eligible beneficiaries make up more than 15% of the Medicaid population. Medicaid is the nation's main source of payment for long-term care, covering more than 40% of all long-term care expenditures in the country. This means Jill's parents can get the long-term care they need. Health disparities refers to differences between groups of people. These differences can affect how frequently a disease affects a group, how many people get sick, or how often disease causes death. Health disparities can affect population groups based on social, economic status, geography, race or ethnicity, gender, age, sexual orientation, disability, or special health care needs. Medicaid helps to promote increased access to care and can help address health disparities. Approximately 65 million people live in areas designated by the federal government as having a shortage of primary care providers. This is especially a problem in rural communities. In some areas, there is low physician participation in Medicaid. Some ideas to explain this low physician participation may include low reimbursement rates, payment delays, or additional paperwork in administration. Access to mental health services, dental care, and specialty providers has also been difficult for Medicaid beneficiaries. Although their children and Jill's parents were eligible for Medicaid in 2009, John and Jill were not. Their income was more than the one of the greatest changes to the Medicaid program began in 2010 when President Barack Obama signed the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act gives states the option to expand Medicaid eligibility to adults under the age of 65 with incomes at or below 133% of the federal poverty level. Medicaid expansion under the Affordable Care Act is often called Obamacare. Individuals who wish to apply for health insurance coverage under the ACA can do so through the federal or state marketplaces. Enrollment takes place online by phone, fax, mail, as well as in person. The ACA has strategies to improve the patient access to primary care providers. Um, one was to reach out to include health professionals like nurse practitioners and physician assistants. Um, they also temporarily increased primary care reimbursement rates. They have expanded the patient-centered medical homes and also increased funding for federally qualified health centers. Michigan has chosen to expand Medicaid under the ACA or Affordable Care Act with the Healthy Michigan Plan. This plan covers Michigan residents age 18, 19 to 64 years old living with an income at or below 133% of the federal poverty level. Today, this is about $16,000 for an individual and $33,000 for a family of four. The Healthy Michigan Plan was approved on December 30, 2013, 
and enrollment began on this plan April 1, 2014. This Medicaid expansion called the Healthy Michigan Plan is offered to enrollees by health insurance companies like Meridian, Priority Health Choice, Blue Cross Complete, Molina Healthcare, United Healthcare, Total Healthcare, HAP Midwest, McLaren, Health Plus Partners, Harbor Health Plan, Coventry Cares, and Sparrow PHP. The Healthy Michigan Plan covers services that were previously difficult to access such as dental care, vision, and some mental health services. The Healthy Michigan Plan may have co-pays for services and contributions that enrollees pay monthly. All cost sharing is paid into health accounts. Co-pays are payments for health care services used by Healthy Michigan Plan enrollees. Co-pays for Healthy Michigan Plan enrollees range from $1 to $3 depending on the service with non-urgent inpatient hospital stays costing $50. Some types of services and eligible groups of enrollees have no copays. Services exempt from copays include some emergency services, family planning services, pregnancy-related services, and preventative services. There are also no copays for services received through federally qualified health centers, rural health clinics, or tribal health centers. Groups exempt from copays include beneficiaries under, the, under 21 years of age, individuals residing in nursing facilities, um, individuals receiving hospice care, Native American Indians, and Native Alaskans. In addition to copays, individual beneficiaries making between 100 and 138 percent of the federal poverty level are also required to make contributions to their health savings account. Um, contributions may amount to 2% of the enrollee's income. Enrollees can reduce the cost of copays and contributions by participating in healthy behaviors. This can include losing weight, quit smoking, and taking other preventative measures. Thanks to Michigan's Medicaid expansion, the Healthy Michigan Plan, John and Jill are eligible for health insurance. John was able to get treated for depression after enrolling in the Healthy Michigan Plan. His performance improves at work and he gets a promotion. Today, you have the ear of decision makers and they're listening to what Medicaid priorities are important to you, your family, and your community. To help discuss Medicaid spending priorities, we're going to play a game called Chat, Choosing All Together. We will use chat to set Medicaid priorities for yourself, your family, and community. Today we will use chat to prioritize Medicaid funding categories important to you. Today we talked about what Medicaid is, some examples of programs that Medicaid funds, how it's funded, why it's important, and some important changes that are occurring within the Medicaid program. So thank you and enjoy playing chat.